What do we call performance? Why are some people better at accomplishing specific tasks than others? Why are some people better at sports? Better at music? Incredible public speakers? Top notch doctors? This is the task researchers at the brand new Centre for Performance Science in London decided to investigate. My name is Aaron Willeman. I'm Professor of Performance Science at the Royal College of Music, and I also direct the Centre for Performance Science, which is a partnership between the Royal College of Music and Imperial College London. In the Centre for Performance Science, we're trying to take a very broad view of performance. We know that across certain domains, we, sh we sh already share a vocabulary. For example, uh, surgeons perform operations, and they often do them in an operating theater. And musicians will experiment with new art forms and new ideas. Uh, we get this interplay between um, sports, science, medicine, business, music, and so on. We are interested here in trying to understand how um, more effectively to capture performance, how to measure it, and in order to do that, that means sometimes using new technology uh, to look at um, how people move, how they sound, how they look. When we think about performance, the first thing that comes to mind are physical abilities, how fast we can run, how heavy we can lift, and so on. First stop, the Charing Cross Hospital. Hello, my name's Alison McGregor. I'm a professor of musculoskeletal biodynamics at Imperial College. I've been researching performance for many years, but looking more at physical performance and elite sporting performance. I think when you just look at how quickly somebody moves or how much they can lift, um, you actually miss quite a lot of detail because it's often the how they do it and how they achieve it that is where you can understand certain factors. I'm interested in looking at how they move and the biomechanics of how they move so that we can optimise it or make it better from both being able to run that bit faster or to make sure you can keep on running without getting injured. If you're a runner, how your feet are striking the floor, which pattern your feet um, go from the heel to the toes. There's a lot of press on barefoot and shod running. When you want to investigate that, you have to look at the interaction between the foot and the ground. Unfortunately, we behave differently when we are observed. People always behave differently when they're being watched. And it's, it's part of the problem in a lot of medicine is, you know, when we ask somebody to move, when they have a problem or health, they will move because they know in a way that they think is the way we want to see them moving. Um, and there's something, there's not a lot we can do about that in a laboratory setting. But I do also do a lot of work with some of my colleagues in mechanical engineering and electrical engineering on wearable technology. So how can we replicate some of these measurements out in somebody's everyday normal environment to a degree that actually they forget that they're wearing a sensor. Therefore, it seems there's a mental component in performance, something beyond the simple physical abilities. So how differently do performers really think? Next up, the Royal College of Music. So my name is Liliana Araujo and I'm research associate in performance science. There is a lot of research showing that mental skills and the, the mental process involved in performance uh, are of huge importance to achieve success. Most of the research has shown that these skills are developed. Uh, and I would say that what distinguishes performance um, or performers from the other occupations is that performance includes an, an element of external, continuous external evaluation. So if you think of a, a, an athlete, uh, the main goal is to gain a medal or to be the faster runner in the world. All musicians or dancers or actors want to be the best on stage. So there's always um, some kind of external evaluation and a constant pressure um, to excel on stage, wherever the stage is. So all, all these physical and social and cultural and psychological demands associated to being a performer can have psychological implications. But we also know, and I think that's something to, st to, to stress, we, we know from research that the best performers in the world, in the different fields, 
can find ways of dealing with these psychological demands effectively. In this case, a performance is not only what happens on the running track or on stage, but it can be something that takes place in a business context, for example. Next up, the Imperial Business School. My name is Terry Clark. I'm a research fellow in the Center for Performance Science. I'm also a researcher and facilitator within Imperial College Business School's uh, executive education departments. Uh, so within a business setting, for instance, there are many different types of performances that uh, a business executive might do. They might pitch uh, an idea or a concept to investors or to uh, clients or potential customers, perhaps. Uh, they might pitch um, or present financial statements at the uh, year-end AGM, for, for instance. Uh, pitch projects, updates to uh, a board of directors, any of those kinds of things. So anytime they are uh, preparing and then communicating or delivering content, we would consider that to be um, an aspect of performance as well. Then, how would we evaluate a complex performance, for example a musical performance, in a scientific setting? So here at the Royal College of Music, we're interested in musical performance, both in terms of how people take to the stage and deliver exceptional musical uh, skills, but we're also interested in how they develop and refine and acquire those skills. So we do a lot of research into how people learn and practice, and we do a lot of research into how people meet the demands and take advantage of the opportunities on stage, as well as how audiences respond to those performances. There is really very little evidence out there to say that uh, there are certain uh, biological or genetic predictors of great musical ability. Um, but what we do know for sure is that what does predict great musical ability the most is a lot of hard work and very clearly directed learning. We were able to identify, uh, distill out and abstract sort of key aspects or key elements of the performance environment, recreate those elements uh, and, and put them into a, a relatively small, relatively cost efficient space. The, the performance simulator recreates um, the process uh, that a musician would go through uh, in engaging and undertaking a performance. The performance simulator is a designated space where the performer will face a pre-recorded crowd on a screen following different scenarios. If they are praised, if they are unsatisfying, or even just disturbed in the middle of the performance. We've recognized that, uh, again, going back to this concept that performance or the act of performance applies to many different disciplines, uh, that other types of performers can also make use of the performance simulator as well. So for instance, uh, we're now doing some work with different departments within um, the business school at Imperial College, so executive education as well as uh, enterprise lab, focusing particularly on things like nonverbal uh, communication, body, uh, body language, those kinds of things. So how are they standing? Are they communicating or projecting confidence, uh, excitement, passion, any of those kinds of things? Or are they looking ashamed to be out on stage or shy while they're out on stage as well. Ultimately, the concept of performance seems to be a complex combination of many factors for which there is still much to learn and discover. Here is Professor Alison McGregor once again. I, I think there's lots of components to performance and actually that's one of the um, really nice facts of the performance center because it's performance isn't just about physicality it's about physiology it's about um, mental approach it's about resilience it's about psychology so there's there's a whole gambit of things that can influence somebody's in performance right down to the environment you're performing in and the culture within that environment so one of the nice things about the center is we've brought together people with different perspectives so that we can look at it as a whole concept rather than just um, the way we've done it traditionally where we all work in our silos of physicality or psychology now the center will facilitate people actually bringing all of that expertise together and then we can start answering some of those questions in a much more robust way the Center for Performance Science website is being launched this week. You can find more information at www.performancescience.ac.uk.